It's such a joy to click with a novel. Those initial pages which plunge you into the world and characters. The expectations you build of who the central cast might be. To then see those expectations continually undermined by the changing circumstances of Anthony Rand's protagonist, Owen Scribe, does a ride and a half. The storytelling mode adopted in the Covenant of Steel trilogy is from the point of view of an older Alwyn, scribbling down his youthful experiences. I'm particularly partial to this narrative model. Recent and hallowed examples of it include Richard Swan's Empire of the Wolf and, of course, Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun, among many others. The sense of dramatic irony and foreboding a capable author can work into a story with this literary device is potent. Anthony Ryan proves himself adept with it time and again, as here, I quote, I like to think I learned more from Declan Scowl that day than I did throughout the preceding years of our association. However, the principal lesson he would teach me in very short order would be this. All ambition is folly, when it fails to be matched by reason. This is but one example that stands out among many. Often we as readers are given the contours of an idea as to where events may soon go, yet that doesn't take away from seeing the events unravel on the page. Rather, interest is heightened. It's one of those strategies that invites readers to speculate as they read along. That's why I love this method of storytelling. It makes the reading of a novel even more explicitly collaborative between author and audience. This pet passion out of the way, let's turn our attention to another element of this work that simply delights me. I love fantasy novels that take their cue from historical events before going in widely fun new directions. In some ways, the prior is such a novel. Several characters and cultures have roots in popular archetypal figures from history. Alwyn's first leader and benefactor, the outlaw Deccan Skull, is a de-romanticized version of Robin Hood. While he certainly steals from the rich, he's likely to give to the poor only if that serves his aims or increases his reputation for largesse with the common folk. Similarly, Captain Everdeen Curlane, one of the main characters of the book, will send your Joan of Arc radar pinging. And the Ascalians, a people to the far-off north, are quintessential worshippers of an Asgard-adjacent pantheon, if I ever saw one. Similar comments can be made about the tenets of the Covenant of the Martyr, the chief religion of Alwyn's homeland, and its likeliness to a certain Christianity that we may be familiar with. What makes each of these elements so gratifying to read about is the way Rand makes them his own. I'd be doing this novel a disservice if I didn't stop to consider the protagonist. Alwyn scribes past throughout the prior is a spectacular one. In the span of 560 pages, Anthony Ryan portrays a young outlaw turned jaded prisoner turned soldier in a complex relationship with a Joan of Arc figure. And really isn't that every young man's truest aspiration? To see a character grow and learn from their mistakes only to make various new ones. To see them develop down a path that, if you're lucky, you are partial to and enjoy. On both accounts, Alwyn's development spoke to me. He is intelligent and perceptive, but brash, qualities that make for a character as likely to get into trouble as he is to get out of them. Or coast by just before they ever come calling. Often Alwyn knows better than to do a thing, almost as often he does it anyway. This is a believable and relatable lead, even in those moments of callous disregard for another's life. Perhaps because Ryan imbues him with a potent sense of guilt. What's a great leading man without a support cast to watch his back, or at least put a dagger or two in it? Well, you'll have to make due with the first. Let me calm you. While there is little in the way of people backstabbing Alwyn, he's more than happy to backstab a former teacher or two, whether to survive or to deliver vengeance. As for his friends, there are several notable ones. Toria is one of the first people that Alwyn chooses to save at his own expense, and one of the finest friends you could make. Toria's caustic, competent, and short-fused. 
but steadfast. The way she sticks with Alwyn through thick and thin is great, and I hope to get more of that dynamic in the sequel, even as the two's paths begin to diverge. When Alwyn joins Covenant Company after his imprisonment, Toria joins too, as there's another prisoner of the pit mines, Brewer. In gaming terms, a tree would make for an excellent tank and DPS group. So the closest thing they have to a freelance to a healer is a freelancer, a uh, Keris spell worker known as the Sackwitch. If you love your characters clothes in an abundance of mystery, you will love the Sackwitch. I know I did. If you're in for a taste of gallantry and knightly deeds, there's even a turncoat knight with a death wish whose acquaintance you might enjoy. Look for Wilhelm Dornmel. I couldn't even get started on Everdeen Colain, the captain of Covenant Company, and the figure around which I suspect much of the next two books will revolve, in addition to the better part of this one. I have thoughts about the anointed captain, this holy figure that goes through her own share of travails in this first book, and I hope to voice them another time. The prior scratched my itch for a complex and adult work of fantasy, one that succeeds as much on the strength of character as it does on the appeal of its low magic setting. You'll particularly enjoy this novel if you'd like an intimate read that has deep political dimensions. I think this would appeal to a lot of George R. R. Martin fans, in fact. Anthony Rand starts off a trilogy that doesn't lack for anything. Not bone-crunching battles and unexpected defeats. Not even the occasional miracle. I'm ever so eager to jump into the second book in the series. If you would enjoy listening to my thoughts on that one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel! Smash that like button and let me know, have you read anything by Anthony Rand? For me, he is a brand new author, although I know he has quite a few fantasy novels under his belt. I'm very excited to look out uh, for all of them at some point, especially once I'm done with the Covenant of Steel trilogy, which is uh, which wrapped up just a few months ago in terms of publication. So it's all out there, all available, and I'm uh, making my way through it, fast as can be. I'm Philip Magnus. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!